Hi, my friends. So, um, just did a couple of Roberta Flack songs, if you want to check them out. Uh, first time ever I saw your face uh, was one of them. And um, uh, anyway, they're on, on the YouTube, they're uploaded. Um, so if you wanted to um, uh, check that out, you can. And um, anyway, uh, we had a little uh, earthquake yesterday, uh, 5.3 out in Channel Islands. Um, you know, I just don't trust the um, the USGS. They, they never really give the exact um, uh, seismic uh, strength of earthquakes. They downsize quite often. They don't want, you know, mass exodus of California. Um, in the Northridge, Northridge earthquake that, you know, I, I was here in the, in the San Fernando Valley, um, I s literally saw plants popping up out of the ground and telephone poles popping up and, and swaying in the, in the wire swaying. You know, I saw all of that. So the, I saw the ground look like it was a liquefaction, what's called liquefaction. It looked like liquid. It looked like it was standing on moving ground. And, um, uh, you know, some of my friends even have, you know, um, really scarred from that, you know, earthquake um, because of what they saw and, and the proximity of, of things. And, and uh, it was, you know, I literally saw walls coming towards me like this, okay? I prayed. I was ready to go. I grabbed my little Westie dog and I was like, beam me up, Scotty. You know, I'm ready to go, you know. Um, so, um, I'm at work yesterday, and uh, um, I'm interpreting, you know, it's what I do for a living, right? And all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, earthquake. I'm looking around. I'm on the first floor of a three-floor building. So, I could get under the desk or I could hightail it out of there. And, but I was working, so I'm interpreting, I'm going, oh, we're having an earthquake, <laughs> and I'm interpreting, and I'm looking around, you know, like a little chihuahua, you know, and, um, and I look over at my, you know, my coworker, and they're not even registering, and my butt's so sensitive from that Northridge earthquake, I know, you know, it, it felt to me like a two, you know, or three, um, but, um, so I immediately text my wife, and she's in Ventura. Well, the earthquake was in Channel Islands, which is just offshore, 50 miles from us. So people who were on that island, they were having landslides. They were, if they were kayaking, it's a kind of famous spot to go to, uh, take a boat, hike on the island, or kayak. There's caves you can go into. It's kind of fun. But... Those people who were there, rocks were falling down and, you know, people were a little shook up <laughs> by it, you know. Um, and so uh, they hightailed it out of there and got back to the mainland. And um, so anyway, so that's what happened yesterday. Everything's fine here. There was no, Juliana came back home uh, from work. She, it's only four miles away. So she came and checked and, and there was you know, nothing out of place. Nothing had moved. Um, Everything's okay so far. So I go to look at Dutch Sense because he's my guy that I go to, and he's not, he hasn't been on since the 4th. So something's going on. They're censoring him, or they're just not, not allowing him to get out his report because he's been right, and he hisses that energy does transfer across the plates. I don't care what they say, all the fracking that's going on, the oil rigging that's going on, the earth that's moving, it follows those tracking, um, sorry, fracking uh, facilities. Uh, they ca can cause earthquakes as well. And if you go to his website, he explains everything. And he came up with this brilliant software that shows deep earthquakes and how it transfers over through the ring of fire all over the earth. He shows how it all works. And even just until a few weeks, like last week, 
you know, professors say, no, energy doesn't travel. Well, we have proof that it does. And they just refuse to give him recognition. He should be in charge of the USGS as far as I'm concerned, just for coming up with that program. So anyway, um, last that we finished was at Swedenborg and on um, page 118. So I wanted to get going with that. But I just wanted you to know I'm fine, everything's good, we're good. <laughs> um, once love for our neighbor has changed into love for ourselves, we could no longer be born into the light of knowledge and intelligence, but only into the darkness of ignorance. So we were talking about, you know, love and, and all of that. This is because we we're born into the lowest level of life that we call sensatory and bodily. We are led from there into the deeper functions of our earthly mind by being taught always with spirituality close at hand. And we shall see later why we are born into the lowest level of life that we call sensatory bodily and therefore into darkness of ignorance. Everyone can see love for our neighbor and love for ourselves are opposing loves, you know, like self love. Love for our neighbor wants to do good for everyone. Okay. Love um, uh, love for our neighbor wants to serve everyone. Love for ourselves wants everyone to be our servants. Love for our neighbor sees all people as our family and friends, while love for ourselves sees all people as our slaves. And if people are not subservient, it seems them that as our in they're seen as our enemies. In short, it focuses on ourselves alone and sees others as scarcely human. At heart, it values them no more than our horses and dogs, and since it regards them as basically worthless, it thinks nothing of doing them harm. This leads to hatred and vengeance, adultery, promiscuity, theft, fraud, deceit, slander, br brutality, cruelty, and other evils like that. Um, these are the evils to which we are prone from birth. To explain that they are permanent are permitted for the purpose of salvation, I need to proceed in the following sequ sequence. We are involved in evil and need to be led away from it in order to be reformed. Evils cannot be set aside unless they come to light. To the extent that our evils are set aside, they are forgiven. So evil is permitted for the purpose of salvation. We are involved in evil and need to be led away from it in order to be reformed. It's well known in the church that we all have inherited an evil nature, and this is the source of our obsession with many evils. This is also why we can do nothing good on our own. The only kind of good that evil can do is good with evil within it. The, the inner evil is the fact that we are doing it for selfish reasons and solely for the sake of appearances. You know, like pleasure, okay? You're doing it only for your own pleasures and no other reason. Uh, solely for the sake of appearances. So we know that we get this inherited evil from our parents. Some do say that it comes from Adam and his wife, but this is wrong. We all get it by birth from our parents. So who got it from their parents, who got it from theirs, and so forth and so forth. So it's handed down from one to another, growing greater, stronger, piling up, being inflicted on the offspring. This is why there's nothing sound within us, why everything in us is so evil. Does anyone feel that there's anything wrong with loving oneself more than others? If not, then who knows what evil is, since it is the head of all evils. We can see from much that it's common knowledge in our world that our heredity comes from our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. For example, we can tell what household and larger families and even nation people belong to simply from their face. The face bears the stamp of their spirit and the spirit is determined by, the, by our desires of love. Sometimes the face of an ancestor crops up in a grandchild or great-grandchild, and I can tell simply from their faces whether people are Jewish or not. I can tell what family group others belong to. I have no doubt that others can do the same. 
If our desires of love are derived and passed down from our parents in this way, then it follows that their evils are as well, since these are matters of desire. Okay. I need now to state that there is similarity, the similarity comes from. For all of us, the soul comes from the father, simply put on a body in the mother. The fact that the soul comes from the father follows not only from what has just been said, but also from a number of other indications. One of these is the fact that a baby of a black or Moorish man by a white or European woman will be born black and the reverse. In particular, the soul dwells in the semen, for this is what brings about impregnation, and this is what the mother clothes with a body. The semen is the elemental form of the father's characteristic love, the form of his dominant love and his intermediate um, derivatives and the deepest desire of that love. In all of us, these desires are veiled by the decencies of moral life and the virtues that are partly matters of our civic life and partly matter of our spiritual life. These make up the outward form of life, even for evil people. We are all born with these outer form of life. This is why little children are so lovable, but as they get older and grow up, they shift from this outer form toward their deeper natures and ultimately to the dominant love of their fathers. If the father was evil and in this nature is not somehow softened and deflected by teachers, then the child's love becomes just like that of the father. Still, evil is not uprooted, only set aside, as we shall see below, and we can tell then that, that we are all immersed in evil. No explanation is necessary to see that we need to be led away from our evils in order to be reformed. Since if we are given to evil in this world, we will be given to evil after we leave this world. This means that if our evil is not set aside at this, in this world, it cannot be set aside afterwards. The tree lies where it falls, and so too our life retains its basic quality when we die. We are judged according to our deeds. It is not that these deeds are, are tailed up, but that we return to them and, and behave the same. Death is a continuation of life and the difference that we cannot be reformed. Okay? So you need to be reformed now before you pass on because you can't do it. I mean, you could be taught, you could, you know, and I, there's something that, um, I forget what it was, uh, that you have to do it here. Okay, this is this is why Jesus came um, to help us understand that. Our reformation is thorough. That is, it includes both first, first things and last things. The last things are reformed in this world in harmony with the first ones. They cannot be reformed afterwards because the outermost things of our lives that we take with us after death become dormant and simply cooperate or act in unison with the inner ones. Evils cannot be set aside unless they, they come to light. This does not mean that we have to act out of our evils in order to bring them to light, but we need to look carefully, not only at our action, but also our thoughts, at what we would do if we were not for our fear of the laws and of ill repute. Repro we need to look especially at evils we see as permissible in our spirit and do not regard as sins, for eventually we do them. Um, this is for self-examination, that we've been given discernment, uh, a discernment separate from our volition so that we can know, discern, recognize what's good and what is evil. And I'm going to stop right there. Um, page 121. Okay. So I hope you have a great weekend um, and, you know, drop me a line. Let me know what you think of the songs um, and um, let me know what's going on with you. I love you guys. Bye.